All right, everyone, welcome back to today's video. Welcome back. My name is Taylor Coleman. I'm the CEO, lead writer, director, and producer at Crystal Ignition LLC. We are a small independent film and video production company located in Jacksonville, Florida. And on this channel, we talk filmmaking and gaming. So if that interests you, do me a favor, uh, hit that like button and hit that little bell icon. If you subscribe, so you can get notified whenever we post. We post twice a month, so you won't be getting notifications um, blowing up your phone. And when we post, you're going to be in for either some entertainment or a little bit of knowledge when it comes to filmmaking. So today we are going to be talking about five film directors that you will probably end up studying in film school. So I get questions a lot about film school. Uh, these videos seem to be very popular on this channel. So I figured today we're going to go a little bit into some film directors. So um, before we get started with this video disclaimer, um, this is not meant to be a list of like the best directors or the top directors. Um, I personally do not think that there is a best director. I think that that is a very personal decision that every fan of films has to decide for themselves. But there are certain practitioners that are really, really good at what they do and for our purposes as filmmakers um, and for learning purposes, um, there are certain filmmakers that I think everyone should take the time to read about and watch their movies and analyze them. So we're going to be talking about five film directors that you will probably study in film school. So to start off our list with number five, number five on the list is going to be Charlie Chaplin. So. I think everyone should be a little familiar with Charlie Chaplin. Um, you've probably definitely seen him in like commercials or maybe uh, posters for things related to film, but he is a filmmaker that you are definitely going to end up talking about and at the very least watching clips from his movies. Um, so he got his start in around 1914, 1915. Um, I'm not sure if the, uh, the exact date, but um, definitely in the silent era like most of his films were silent and he really became famous because of his tramp persona so when you see those pictures of him in like a suit and he has like the little uh uh kind of circular hat on um and his movies were like almost like comedy movies like very funny um but also critiques of things going on in society um one movie that immediately comes to mind is the great dictator which is kind of um this anti-hitler um, anti-Nazi film, um, definitely something I think people should watch today and, um, really entertaining films. And, um, yeah, he's definitely a film director that you will end up studying in film school. So, um, if you haven't already, definitely check out some of his movies and, uh, look into Charlie Chaplin a little bit. Um, he's a pretty interesting figure. So moving on to number four on this list. Number four on the list of five film directors you will probably study in film school is going to be Wong Kar Wai. So um, he emerged in the late 1980s, and this is a filmmaker that is most famous and most known for two movies. Um, the first one is going to be In the Mood for Love, and the second one is going to be Chung King Express. Um, these are both really fantastic films, and um, a lot of discussions around the, his films, especially Chung King Express, um, it's centered around the production and how he shot these films and how long it took him to make them. Um, so for all my indie filmmakers out there, uh, this is definitely a movie, um, a Chunking Express that you want to check out if you've never watched it before. Um, and yeah, this is a film director and a filmmaker that you definitely, definitely are going to be studying while you're in film school. So um, again, his name is Wong Kar Wai. Definitely, if you've never heard of him before, you have to watch some of his movies. He's a very important filmmaker. So moving on to number three on this list. And number three on this list is going to be Sergei Eisenstein. So if you all have uh, read our blog at crystalignitionllc.com, you might have noticed that we um, recommended one of his books. It was either Film Form or Film Sense. I'm not exactly sure which one, 
but both of those books are very important if you've never read them. And the reason why Sergei Eisenstein is such an important filmmaker is because he came up with the montage theory, um, a way of uh, sort of conveying meaning through montage. Um, he emerged from the Soviet Union um, and one of his most important films off the top of my head would be Battleship Potemkin, um, silent film from what I remember. But um, yeah, very, very important filmmaker. Um, I know him more for his writing, uh, but that's because I'm a grad student. But for the rest of you, for all my undergrads or just people that are not really interested in going to film school, um, definitely uh, look into Sergei Eisenstein. If you can, read um, his two books, Film Form and Film Sense, and check out some of his movies. Um, very important filmmaker, and you definitely will end up at the very least watching a clip from um, Battleship Potemkin. So before we move on to my last two film directors on this list, I want to take a moment to tell you all about our affiliates and deals. Um, we here at Crystal Ignition LLC are official affiliate partners with over 10 brands. Um, it's stuff that I use all the time and stuff that we use here at the studio. I do not come out here and shill products. Um, I would never do that. Um, like when I talk about Books A Million, um, you know, I cannot stress this enough. I actually shop at Books A Million. Um, I'm like always there. If you ever visit Jacksonville and you ever go into a Books A Million, you just might see me in there. Um, yeah, so so head on over to crystalinditionllc.com. Um, I mean, we have all kinds of affiliates. We have our friends over at Grove Entertainment for all of your Blu-rays. So if you're looking to get physical media, um, you can head over there. Uh, if you're looking for a discount, uh, check out our friends at Kneewear, um, Glide Gear. Um, we have all kinds of brands related to filmmaking. Um, and yeah, if you want to help out the channel, um, go over there and snag yourself a deal and use one of our affiliate codes. And um, you know, check it out before you make your next online purchase. So that's going to take us to our last two film directors on this list, everyone. And for number two on this list is going to be someone that I've been um, watching their films for like the past few weeks. I watched two of their films that I was really uh, interested in watching. And I figured they make a great addition to this list because even now in graduate school, I have talked about this filmmaker a lot. And that is going to be the one and only Jean-Luc Godard. So he is a French and Swiss filmmaker. Um, he emerged in the French New Wave, so that was in like the 1960s. And he also was around um, writing film reviews, from what I gather. Um, so two movies that come to mind immediately are going to be Breathless and Alphaville. So Alphaville is a film um, that I actually watched about two to three weeks ago as of the recording of this video. Um, looked very interesting to me and I sat down and looked at it. Very, very good film. Highly recommend it. But Breathless is the one that you definitely will end up talking about if you ever go to film school. Um, in particular, I would say the dolly shot in that film um, where our two protagonists are kind of walking. And I'm going to put a screenshot on the in the video so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, you're definitely going to end up talking about Breathless or watching it. Um, if you have a great film professor, they will find a way um, to let you watch this film. But if not, I highly recommend that you check it out on your own time. So that's going to take us to number one on this list. And number one on this list is going to be Spike Lee. So we are very fortunate enough to have some um, very important filmmakers still around with us today. And Spike Lee is one of those filmmakers. Um, if you have not done so, there's an interview that he did, I believe, with Film Courage. Um, I'm going to put that on the screen so you guys can see it. And I'm going to put a link as well in the top right corner. So once you're done with this video, if you want to scroll back or you want to open it in the new tab, definitely look at that interview. But um, Spike Lee, very important filmmaker. He came out in the 1980s um, with She's Gotta Have It. Um, another uh, film that he did, Do the Right Thing. Um, these are two films that you definitely, definitely, definitely are going to be talking about in film school. I would argue like week one, week two, um, very, very important films and very good films. 
Um, I remember discussing both of these in my screenwriting class. Um, not going to get into why here because this will be like a 30 minute long video, but two very important films um, for me personally, because I feel like I'm going to get this question. Um, two of my favorite films from Spike Lee would have to be um, Inside Man and Old Boy. Um, those are two of his films that I like. Uh, some of you might be like, oh boy, you know, the remake he did, everyone hates that film, but I thought it was pretty entertaining. Um, another one was Miracle at Santa Ann. Um, that's one I recently had a discussion about in grad school. We had to talk about that film, but, um, yeah, Spike Lee, very important filmmaker. You definitely will end up talking about him. And if you've never seen his films, definitely sit down and look at some Spike Lee films. So that's going to take us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, remember to do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, um, help us out here. We post videos twice a month. Um, we love all of the support and we definitely could use some more. And um, yeah, have a good day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you all next time. Peace out.